If you want your child or children to have an unfair advantage in life, teach them financial literacy. I definitely can see no greater social impact we can implement on the lives of our students in teaching them financial literacy. Money is freedom and money knowledge is the bridge to that freedom. Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to Intuit for Education's Teaching Finance Series. If you don't recognize me, I'm May, your host. I haven't really shared that much about myself previously, so here's a super quick summary. I grew up in Taiwan, came to California when I was 11, went to UC Berkeley, and landed a finance job after college, but then switched over to become a high school math teacher, at that time teaching integrated math and pre-calculus. Best time of my life. I still keep in touch with many of my students who are now 24, 26, and some even have kids who are older than my own kids. As you can see, I'm now currently in ed tech, and I've been in this field for the last seven years. That's it. Oh, and I can also rap three songs really, really well. Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Super Bass by Nicki Minaj, and Superman by Eminem. And I don't do this in front of my own kids. Anyway, today we're going to focus on the topic of engaging parents and guardians, especially in the financial literacy space. And we have such a cool guest to learn from. When I first met Jeremy, I was just in awe of his love and dedication to his students. His strong passion and knowledge for personal finance also really shines through, and he is just such an inspiring individual. Jeremy started off his career as an accountant for GNC, but now teaches high school business classes in Pennsylvania, like foundations of investing and financial accounting. He's actually on his 16th year in education. Fun facts about him is that he also worked as a youth social worker, a lifeguard, and taught swim classes. So Jeremy, I'll let you share some more and maybe also how you got interested in the financial literacy space and why you became a teacher. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm from a small town, small town boy, uh, about an hour south of <laughs> Pittsburgh. Um, town's called Connorsville. I do remember always as a kid being interested in money. I took all the accounting classes in high school. I seemed to enjoy those. One of probably the only types of classes I, I enjoyed when I was in high school. I was a bit of a late oh, bloomer. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a bit of a late bloomer when it uh, had come to my academics. It was the month of May of my senior year. One of my teachers had brought in a guest speaker from a local community college. And mm -hmm. it was month of May, again, my senior year. And I kind of thought, wow, I need to figure something out here. The community <laughs> college sounded like a great place to start. So I enrolled, right. pursued business, transferred to a state university here in Pennsylvania, acquired my bachelor's in, in business, went to work in the accounting field in Pittsburgh at yeah. GNC. And with that, I continued on in accounting for a little while. And uh, I just started to feel like something was missing. And it mm. took me a little bit of time to put my finger on it. And I realized that it was that interaction with with kids, it was the interaction with the youth that I had become so accustomed mm. to. I never really knew what impact I had on those kids when I worked with them, but I started right. to realize the impact they had on me. And that's when I knew it was time for a change. So I, I put a plan in action, went back to school, acquired my business teaching certification. It mm. seemed seemed like a, a good fit to move into. Uh, I do love right. the subject of business. Teaching definitely seemed like the right path 16 years later. I have no complaints and uh, yeah. still going strong. I love what you said about how kids transform your lives and how you really resonate with that. And that's why you want to be in your field. And yeah, that's amazing. What is so important about financial literacy and why, in your opinion, and I know you touched upon that of yourself and why money was so important to you earlier on. What is important about right now to teach it to your students before they graduate and leave you and go beyond high school? Why is it so important to impart this on them now? Yeah, absolutely. I'm going to paraphrase Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. If you want your children to have an unfair advantage in life, teach them financial literacy. I believe in that wholeheartedly. Money skills, money knowledge, they allow you to make plans. And we all know that those who fail to plan, plan to fail. I definitely can see no greater social impact we can implement on the lives of our students in teaching them financial literacy. Money is freedom and money knowledge is the bridge to that freedom. I want to now touch upon the topic of today that we wanted to talk more about. Yeah. So just a topic of engaging families. And I know you have a ton of families that you have to engage with for your students. Why is that important to you and just in general to teachers? Why is engaging parents and guardians and such so important to you and your students? 
for me, it all comes down to buy-in. The more we can mm -hmm. get students to buy-in, the more we can get their families to buy-in, the better outcome for students. And again, just to come back to the whole proactive, reactive, being proactive, putting a little work in on the front end makes it so much easier and less work on the back end. If we can get students to buy into what we're doing and connect them to the schools, again, their outcomes are better. And quite frankly, it makes my job easier. How do you engage in, with your families on the topics that you teach? And how have you seen a difference after you've engaged and got every, you know, all this, your students' supporters buying in? So how have you seen that change? Yeah, it, it, it's a mil the million dollar question. How can you get families more engaged? Social media, I think that's a big. Really? Absolutely. Um, for, oh, okay. for my classes, I've. I've, I've branded a little bit with my electives. I've created a lot of the social media pages, the Instagrams, the TikToks, the Twitters, or X, whatever we're going to no call No way. That now. Okay, yeah. I got to look you up after. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, by all means, uh, at LH or at LHAOF1 uh, for all, all those handles. And it's amazing how much traction you can build with students. And as students start to yeah. follow you and you're putting out, quality content, their families start yeah. to follow along as well. Families are interested to see what their, you know, their children are doing in school. I feel like an important piece of, you know, you teaching financial literacy in your classes is the more, like you just said, the more buy-in you have from the people around your students, the more your students are engaged, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you kind of approach that just advice for listeners? And then how do you get your students to feel more comfortable too. A few years back, well, probably more than a few years back, a <laughs> decade or so ago, I, I really kind of retooled my intro level class to, to emphasize investing. Now, I'm not a stockbroker. I do not give any type of investment advice, but my thinking was stocks in the stock market and investing, that, that tends to really interest most people and certainly students. Um, the stock mm. market is seen as a device that can move someone into a better financial position. And mm. I found a, a, a stock portfolio website where students can create mock portfolios. And okay. uh, so every right. year at the beginning of the year, I assign each student yeah. a, a $1 million that they can go out, buy whatever stocks they want. They have to track their portfolios every day. I incorporate awesome. a bell ringer. What I found is students go home, they are excited about that. They actually share that with their families. I've had students tell me that, you know, after dinner, they sit at the table, they open up their laptop, they're looking at the stock portfolios, and the whole family's going through, well, we should buy this stock, well, wow. we should sell that stock. So it's a bit out of the box. Right. Yeah, I found that as a really great way to kind of pull oh, families together. And, you know, yeah. my, my goal with that was just to make students a little more comfortable with the idea of what the stock market is. And not to necessarily stray away, which I think a lot of people do because they don't understand. And it, yeah, it can scary. be risky. It is scary. Absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, when you sit down and you track um, a portfolio, e even if you do horribly bad for the year, um, <laughs> when you're looking at the charts and you're looking at a long enough timeline, I, I think it is yeah. a little bit easier to see that investing in safe investments over a long span of time, yeah. whether it be 10, 20, 30 years, you can get a solid return and it's a great vehicle yeah. to build wealth. That sounds like your students are proud to share what they've learned in your class with their families. And that's a way to get them engaged, which is so cool. Have you heard from your parents and families and guardians and what have they shared with you on what they feel of what you're teaching their students. How did they feel about being engaged by their students? And do they feel, of course, I'm sure they're so excited, but are they also kind of nervous because they don't know how to talk about the topics? Or do they feel like they're just there to support students? Yeah, I, I've received a lot of positive feedback. I've, I've actually had some students come to me and say, hey, my dad was thinking about buying the stock. He wants to know what you think. Uh, of course, I don't give financial oh, advice. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've, I've received uh, yeah positive feedback yeah. O o overall. Um, I, I think mm. mo most parents are thankful that, that the subject's yeah. uh, being taught. You know, yeah. again, it's a little side anecdote when the student's off yeah, for the day, which please. we all have off days. Why do we have to do this? This is so stupid. Uh, you know, my <laughs> response normally normally is, I dare you to go home and tell your parents, Mr. Bryson is trying to teach you how to balance a checkbook and you think it's stupid. I think most, <laughs> most parents, most families, well, that's good. Absolutely. You should know how to do that. Yeah, absolutely. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. What is your favorite topic 
among all the financial literacy topics to teach and why? Yeah, for me, as boring as this might sound, I love teaching accounting. accounting. <laughs> I, I knew <do>. it. <laughs> I love teaching accounting. My background is in accounting, and it is one of those subjects that that it can be so dry. But in mm -hmm. finding a way to get students excited about it, seeing them learn, it's yeah. kind of like climbing over the mountain. And, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm able to do that every year. I get students excited about accounting. I wanted to talk to you about uh, Intuit for Education. And I yeah. think you have a really interesting story where, you know, you I you organically found Intuit for Education's curriculum. And now you've had experience in using that in your class. And, you know, what made you decide to want to branch out to explore different resources when you heard about Intuit for Education? You know, as you know, we're still launching. So we're still building curriculum and the product. and yeah, just your general thoughts on how you've incorporated in your classes, you know, why you chose to do so and what have your students felt from that? I stumbled upon Intuit for Education. I was actually lo looking to implement QuickBooks and pos potentially mm -hmm. a QuickBooks certification into my accounting classes. Mm -hmm. Just out of happenstance and searching for that, I stumbled upon Intuit for Education. I thought, oh, what's this? Mm -hmm. I created an account. I logged in looked over the curriculum. I've been, again, doing financial literacy for about 15 years, 16 years yeah. now. And I've looked over a lot of curriculum. A lot of what's out there is very surface level. It doesn't really go mm. uh, very deep. The depth and breadth of the curriculum just isn't robust enough for me in my classes. And as soon as I started to log in and look through the lessons and see how the lessons connected to one another, the chapters connected to one another, I could tell that there was a lot of quality to the curriculum, and I definitely knew I was going to incorporate into it. The curriculum I, I found to be very robust. Most of the curriculums I have reviewed cost money. <laughs> into it's free. Mm -hmm. And just comparing the two, I, I don't believe there is a comparison. I can't speak enough to how robust the curriculum is and mm -hmm. how thankful I am that Intuit has taken their, their resources to make the lives easier for myself and my colleagues, mm. as well as build such a curriculum that will have an impact on students. That's so great, Jeremy. I feel like it's, it's very comforting to hear that because that is the mission of our org is really to provide a free resource for educators to save them time to learn, to teach so that we can give kids the best quality, the best material for them, you know? So um, going deeper into that, um, what have you done with into, for education with your students and how have you incorporated that in maybe just for other listeners who are interested in doing the same thing? To start off, I had a few planned days that I was going to be out in the fall where I knew a mm -hmm. substitute would be coming in. So some of the self-paced modules I, I, I left yeah. as assignments for students to work through on their own oh, great. just to test the material, get their feedback. Uh, their feedback is positive. If they enjoy the material. I'm starting now to just get around to actually incorporating the curriculum daily, what I've found to be the mm -hmm. best strategy for my classes, and this can change class to class, year to year, but it's actually to go through the self-guided curriculum with my students first, go through the mm -hmm. slide decks, go through the activities. Once we complete the chapter as a whole group, then I assign them the independent pathway for them to work through on their own, and they take that final self-assessment at the end. I found that to be a really nice way to incorporate into it where you, you get more of the buy-in from the students in a whole group and yeah. they get that foundation from oh, such a smart way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and from there, I think they're able to take those skills that they have from the lessons and are more equipped to work through the independent modules. That sounds great. And you mentioned that your students have some positive feedback about the curriculum that they're going through. Any examples of feedback or things that they've shared? Because I know you've heard so much feedback from all these different curriculums and students that you've had. Yeah. Um, yeah, any feedback that they had on this particular curriculum? There are some other online modules um, that our school district mm -hmm. has used throughout most of their schooling. They found them to be mm -hmm. quite boring. Intuit has a lot of interactive engagements with their independent mm -hmm. pathways. They enjoy those. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize oh, when I was first going down this path how antiquated my own curriculum may have been <laughs> that I had pieced together. And that's one of the beautiful things about Intuit for education. You create a login and everything's right there for you. The slide decks, the activities, mm -hmm. everything ties together 
And yeah, it was a great way to, to motivate myself as well as my students, quite, quite frankly. Yeah. I think that's one thing I would like to share with the listeners is how easy Intuit for Education is to use. And yeah. ultimately, it will save you time. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of teachers kind of kind of stray away from from right. doing something new just because of the time commitments that come along with it. We're busy. We're, we're issuing hall passes. We're taking care of bloody noses, <laughs> all of those things. What I have to say is that being proactive, a little bit upfront, saves so much on the back end. And yeah. Intuit's a great example of that, where the little bit of time commitment you have to put upfront will save mm -hmm. so much time on the back end. That's awesome. And that's kind of, I admire, I really truly do admire teachers like yourself who have been teaching for so long. And I'm sure, despite what you say, have a really good curriculum, but you're still willing to explore new things that come out versus stay stagnant with what you're comfortable with, you know, mm -hmm. and you're pursuing different things to bring the best to your students. So any stories with students that you've taught and now, you know, you've continued to see them, I'm sure they keep in touch, many of them as they go off. Um, anything that, you know, you've seen that you've taught them in high school that they use after high school, or what do you see that's lacking for some students who maybe don't have financial literacy knowledge to begin with? Sure. Just sort of like the impact on this topic. Yeah. And students. Sure. Off the top of my head, two former students come to mind. The first student a couple years back, he actually acquired an internship at a local state mm -hmm. farm agency. Another student um, certainly was never intended on going into the business field, but, but enjoyed the classes, realized the power of the education and learning financial literacy. Mm -hmm. Took all of my classes, had graduated. We stayed in contact a little bit. He actually got a job pretty close uh, after graduation or pretty soon after mm -hmm. graduation in our co local coal mines. It was a great, great career for him, making mm -hmm. a lot of money. And he actually stopped back about six months or so after graduation just to stop in and see me. He wanted to shake my hand. Thank me for everything. He, he knew what to oh. do with his, his paycheck. So yeah, those, oh. th those moments are definitely special moments and two yeah. that stand out to me. Um, yeah. And just, just to piggyback off a, another thought too that you had yeah. asked, which was the importance of students who, who don't learn this yeah. and, and don't right. have access to financial literacy in their schools. We all know the stats on the increased effects financial literacy can have on reducing bankruptcies while improving yeah. credit scores, retirement savings for, for people. So when I think right. of financial literacy, I definitely think big picture and the impact that we can have by teaching this type of education. What would you say to listeners who maybe are new at teaching or new at the strategy of starting to engage with their students' families, what advice would you give them on how to start? Because I, I know for a lot of educators, there's this, you know, invisible hard line between themselves and families. And it's hard to kind of step in and engage them. Mm -hmm. It's scary. So what advice would you say to kind of get them started and comfortable enough to open those doors? Sure. Being proactive with families, engaging families. I think the results speak for themselves and it saves so yeah. much work on the back end. I would yeah. encourage all teachers to engage with parents as much as possible. It goes a long way. You're not going to be successful yeah. with everything you do, but mm -hmm. I definitely believe that overall you will be more successful by engaging those families, making them part yeah. of their children's education. And I definitely believe that they should be. I know you have an eight-year-old. Yes. I want to know two things. What was is the most important topic you would want your eight-year-old to know by the time she graduates high school related to this financial literacy? Like, What's like one key thing you need her to know? And two... Are you already actively teaching her at home and treating her like one of your high school students and instilling this knowledge or are you, you know, yeah, how, yeah. <laughs> I want to just know more. Well, well, not to come back and sound like an accounting nerd, but I think for me, <laughs> um, it I, is accounting. It, it is absolutely accounting. Um, mm. Speaking of uh, the social media accounts that I've had with my classes, you know, a few yeah. years ago, I, I had come across a picture of Warren Buffett. And he was doing an interview and sitting on his desk was the exact accounting book that I use in my classes. So I wow. definitely made a post about that. <laughs> and I figure um, if, if, if Warren Buffett places such a heavy emphasis on accounting, I think, I think everyone should. 
Thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate you talking to me today. I think you've shared so much of your experiences, your wisdom, your passion. I'm just really lucky to have um, been able to chat with you. And before you leave, what platforms and what's the handle again, just in case folks want to um, kind of model after what social media presence you've set for your students. Yeah, so we're on Instagram, TikTok, and X. Okay. At LHAOF1 for Laurel Highlands Academy of Finance. Okay. okay, thank you so much, Jeremy. I appreciate your time. It was my it's pleasure. Been so fun. Thank you, May. <laughs> I am so glad we just got to hear from Jeremy. He was seriously so inspiring, and I'm just very touched by everything he shared. If you enjoy this, share it with your friends, family, and colleagues, and definitely subscribe so you can stay up to date on our future episodes. Lastly, don't forget to check out Intuit for Education and come join me in the Intuit Educator community. Talk to you all soon. Bye.